What's up, YouTube? This is 82 and 0. Welcome back. And I know it's been a while, and this happened last month. Unfortunately, we lost George McGinnis, an Indiana Pacer legend, a Hall of Famer, one of the best power forwards the 70s and to the early 80s, really. So I thought it'd be a great time to cover his life story and give him his flowers. So we're going to be telling the George McGinnis story. George McGinnis was born on August 12th, 1950 in Harpersville, Alabama. He was raised in Indianapolis and attended Washington High School. Alongside teammate Steve Downing, he played a pivotal role in leading Washington to a remarkable 31-0 record and securing a state championship in 1969. McGinnis achieved recognition by setting an Indiana State Tournament scoring record 148 points in the last four games. Additionally, he was honored as Mr. Basketball for the state of Indiana that memorable year. During the 70-71 season at Indiana State University Bloomington, George McGinnis made history by becoming the first sophomore to lead the Big Ten in both scoring and rebound. Impressive stats that characterize his performance with an average of 29.9 points per game in his sole season with the Hoosiers. McGinnis received accolades including All-American, all Big Ten honors in 1971. Notably, he played under the coaching of Lou Watson just before Indiana brought in Bob Knight, their legendary Hall of Fame coach who passed last year, actually. Joining the Pacers of the ABA would mark immediate success. He was teamed up with other greats like Mel Daniels and Roger Brown, winning championships in 1972 and 1973. In his tenure with the Indiana Pacers from 71 to 75, quickly established himself as a standout player in the ABA. He played a pivotal role in the Pacers' consecutive championship victories during his first two seasons with the team. McGinnis' stellar performance earned him the title of ABA Playoffs MVP in 1973, contributing significantly with an average of 23.9 points per game and 12.3 rebounds in the 18 playoff game. His most outstanding season occurred in 74-75, where McGinnis achieved a career-high 29.8 points per game, and a career-best 6.3 assists per game, ultimately earning him the ABA MVP honors. Despite his remarkable efforts, the Pacers fell short in the 1975 ABA Finals against Kentucky. McGinnis, however, left an incredible mark in the playoffs, nearly averaging a triple-double, 32.3 points per game, 15.9 rebounds per game, and 8.2 assists per game in 18 games. During the 75 ABA Western Divisional Semifinals against the San Antonio Spurs, McGinnis made history by recording the first 50-point triple-double in any NBA-slash-ABA playoff game with 51 points, 17 rebounds, 10 assists. Additionally, he became the first NBA-slash-ABA player in history to achieve 200 points, 100 rebounds, and 50 assists in a single playoff series, accomplishing this feat twice in consecutive seasons. McGinnis displayed remarkable stats such as scoring 230 points or 38.3 points per game, 18.8 rebounds per game, and 9.2 assists per game against the San Antonio Spurs. And against the Denver Nuggets, he recorded a total of 30.6 points per game, 14.7 rebounds per game, and 8.7 assists per game in the 1975 ABA Divisional Final. Notably, McGinnis became the first NBA-slash-ABA player in history to lead the playoffs in total points, rebounds, and assists only matched by Nikola Jokic of the Denver Nuggets in the 2023 NBA playoffs. That's one thing about McGinnis' play style. He wasn't necessarily the best defender when it came to shot blocking. He was great at getting out in front and getting steals, but he was a very smart passer, very smart rebounder. Played a lot like Jokic, and he, for his time, he was a great three-point shooter. He could extend it out to mid-range. He could shoot the three. Of course, his three-point stats aren't to the level of players today. It just, you know, you wouldn't have a green light to shoot 11 three-pointers a game in the 1970s. But he was very efficient for his time. After two years in the ABA, George McGinnis was chosen by the Philadelphia 76ers with the 22nd overall pick in the second round of the 1973 NBA draft. However, in October 1974, a potential trade that was in the works to send McGinnis draft rights to the New York Knicks, the deal hinged on the condition that the Knicks sign him before he agreed upon a deadline. This arrangement collapsed when McGinnis decided to remain with the Pacers, signing a two-year contract 
that included an $85,000 buyout clause exercised after the 74-75 season. Now, you got to understand during this time, for anybody watching who doesn't know about the ABA-NBA differences, the ABA was this rival league that was getting top-tier NBA players. Um, they were giving them contracts that they couldn't always pay out, so teams would fold. But, th but also, another reason why they were able to get so many great players was... They were a lot more lenient with rules about getting players. Like the NBA, um, if there were scandals about you, let's say maybe in college you had a point shaving scandal, right? The ABA would take you. The NBA wouldn't. Uh, the ABA would draft you out of high school. The NBA wouldn't. I mean, the NBA did implement a hardship draft, but by and large, you had to be a college graduate or at least uh 22 years old you know expressing a preference for playing in new york city due to its financial endorsement opportunities mcginnis sought legal action on may 23rd 1975 he pursued a pre-military injunction in restraining order against the nba aiming to negotiate with any of the league's 18 teams the lawsuit was dropped just weeks later on May 30th when McGinnis signed a bold, for the time anyways, six-year, $2.4 million contract with the Knicks. Challenging the league's constitution, however, on June 5th, Larry O'Brien, the NBA commissioner at the time, disapproved the contract. He ordered that the Knicks forfeit the first selection in the 1976 NBA draft and reimburse the 76ers for all expenses related to the dispute. McGinnis eventually signed a six-year, $3.2 million contract, guaranteed. No cut, no trade, no option contract with the Sixers. Five weeks later, on July 10th, 1975, then McGinnis made an immediate impact in his debut season with the 76ers in 1976, earning a spot on the NBA All-NBA first team. Over his first three seasons with the team, he was selected to two All-Star games. While in Philadelphia, he joined forces with another ABA legend, Julius Irving in Caldwell Jones. McGinnis played a crucial role in propelling the 76ers to the NBA Finals in 1977, contributing in averages of 14.2 points per game, 10.4 rebounds per game, and 3.6 assists per game. Unfortunately, they fell short in the six-game series against the Portland Trail Blazers. And I just want to point out for anyone watching, they did have, at one point have a 2-0 series lead. And you, you can watch the games on YouTube. It was, it was a great series. Um, Julius Irving and George McGinnis were a great duo. Um, in 1978, George McGinnis was traded to the Denver Nuggets in exchange for Bobby Jones. Despite the change of scenery, McGinnis continued to showcase his talent and earned another All-Star selection in that season. Notably, on January 9th, 1980, he achieved an NBA career high by scoring 43 points, accompanied by 12 rebounds, in a game against the Houston Rockets. It's worth mentioning that his career high, combined in the ABA and NBA, is 58 points, achieved during his ABA days. I do, I do think it's interesting that he was traded for Bobby Jones, who was an integral part of the 1983 Sixers championship team. In a surprising move aimed at revitalizing attendance in their early NBA years, the Indiana Pacers reacquired McGinnis by trading away young forward Alex English. However, McGinnis now past his prime had a relatively modest performance, averaging 13.1 points per game during the 81 season. He couldn't leave the Pacers past the first round of the 1981 NBA playoffs, scoring only 10 points in the two-game series against the 76ers. Meanwhile, Alex English went on to become a multiple-time All-Star and franchise player for the Denver Nuggets. But you got to understand the whole reason why Pacers wanted George McGinnis back is he's from Indiana. You know, he went to high school in Indianapolis. The people knew him during the ABA. But unfortunately, he wasn't the same player he was when he was younger. And that's where his career ends. You know, he had injuries. He retired after that. I should note, McGinnis married Linda Dotson in 1976. They were together up until her death in 2019. And unfortunately, McGinnis' health declined severely in those last few years of his life, especially after his wife died. And this was primarily due to multiple surgeries he had to have on his back. And he had a heart condition, he had congenitive heart failure. And he died of heart complications at a hospital in Indianapolis on December 14th, 2023, at the age of 73. So let's talk about his accolades. He's in the Naismith Memorial Hall of Fame. He's a six-time All-Star altogether. 
Um, he's a two-time ABA champion. He's a two-time All-NBA, three-time All-ABA, 1975 ABA MVP. He's on the ABA All-Time team. And his impact is mostly forgotten because the NBA doesn't want to recognize the ABA players. And I get it. It's a different league. And it's kind of hard to really hold someone's championship up and remember the history of it when it was in a whole other league. But nonetheless, these were still professional players, right? I mean, the ABA had a lot of talent, so he could play with the best of them. It's not putting an asterisk on him at all that he played in the ABA. And they had a good finals run when he got to Philadelphia. And unfortunately, he didn't play very long. He played up until the age of 31. You know, then he was having injuries and had to retire with Indiana. But he's an Indiana legend. Uh, Mount Rushmore of Indiana players. I mean, who else can you put on there? Reggie Miller, Mel Daniels, um, Paul George, maybe if you want to put him on there. But let me know what your thoughts are down below. And thanks for watching.